Hey everybody, Pete Meyer, Moon Rage Magazine. Welcome to a very special edition of The Trainer. Uh, this month's topic is air filtration. Now, why it's so important to check this very commonly overlooked maintenance item on your customer's cars. And to help me explain that, we've got Bill McKnight. You may know him uh, from Molly Aftermarket Incorporated. He is their training manager uh, for the North America. He has appeared in a variety of YouTube videos on a variety of topics uh, of the products and services that Molly has to offer. And uh, you've probably seen him too at some of the bigger trade shows, uh, even some of the smaller ones, right? Bill, you've been all over the place uh, providing the Molly Boy, message here. text, right? So let me introduce uh, Bill here to start, bring you up there. Bill, again, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me this afternoon and share your expertise with uh, with our readers. Oh, it's my pleasure and I'm glad to do it. Before we get beginning here, uh, Bill, tell us a little bit watch, who's watching the video that may not understand or know who Molly is. Why don't you tell us a little bit about them? I know there's been a lot of exciting growth and expansion in, in Molly here in North America that, that we're going to be telling more about as we approach Apex. So please, tell us a little bit about that. Well, Molly, of course, is a large German uh, auto parts supplier. Uh, started years ago, matter of fact, in the 1920s making pistons. And they've grown and become a larger and larger corporation until today their uh, sales are probably about 12 billion US dollars. They have mm -hmm. operations all over the world, and uh, we are the aftermarket group for them in North America. And we're at the Molly North American headquarters in Farmington Hills, Michigan, right next door to the OE folks. So Molly does a tremendous amount of OE business, filters and pistons and rings and all sorts of stuff, and then a large amount of aftermarket business too. Sure. And, and as you just mentioned, you guys cover, I mean, a wide variety of automotive components from uh, internal engine Levite bearings, right? Yes, sir. Uh, garage gaskets. Uh, you know, Molly bought Bear about a year ago, so now we're in the thermostat business in the aftermarket. Uh, turbochargers. Uh, you can just about, if it's on the engine, you can just about figure we have it covered. Yeah, absolutely. And one of those items that's on the engine that we're going to talk about today, what a segue. That was great, Bill. Air filters. You know, yep. it's the kind of thing, you know, we know as techs that we need to keep the, the oil and, and oil filter fresh, we need to keep the transmission and, and the filters and the transmission fresh, but sometimes those air filters are, are either just overlooked because we're in a hurry or they're they're buried and not very easily accessible. Let's talk about, uh, first of all, the, you know, a little bit about air filters. Share your knowledge and experience and expertise on the, on air filters and, and what exactly they, they, how they've developed over time. Well, they developed, actually, uh, to back up just a bit, Peter, there's actually two air filters on many vehicles. There is a cabin air filter now on lots of vehicles that filters the air coming in through the uh, air conditioning and heating system. And then, there's, of course, there's an air filter for air going into the engine. Mm -hmm. That air filter that's going into the engine has been on there for years. Matter of fact, when I was a youngster, many vehicles still had what they called an oil bath air filter where the air came down and had to do a reversal through a, a little layer of oil and then all the oil was caught in an element and the air went into the engine. And, uh, those were okay, but you know they were very positional. You couldn't tilt them on the side or anything like that or all the oil would run out. And they required pretty frequent maintenance. So we went from those oil bath filters to elements that were installed in the vehicle and typically thrown away afterwards. And we're still using air filter elements today although they've changed a lot in the last 10 or 15 years. Yeah, I mean, just in comparison, uh, Bill, filters say that we're on uh, all carbureted engines versus today. I know that you, you measure their ability by the micron size uh, that they can capture. Uh, is there a way you can give us some kind of a comparison there between, uh, between old and, and modern filters? Well, it would be hard to do. I'm not an engineer, as you know. I'm a training guy, so sure. it would be hard to do, although I can tell you that the base filters are very efficient because we've gotten sophisticated enough to be able to treat the paper media with chemicals that filter out real small micron-sized elements. So in right. the old way, it was either got caught in the oil, and actually not only did it get caught on the oil, when it had to reverse directions and come down, our yeah. nurse would cause the larger pieces to fall out. Mm -hmm. We're a bit more sophisticated today by a long shot than we were back there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and I don't want to uh, the discount either. You mentioned very uh, importantly uh, the fact that there are two filters involved. The cabin filters are just as overlooked, I think, as the air filters. Uh, there, very let me show you something here. Look here. 
Let me get this up. Hopefully you can see it. This oh, yeah. Here. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Okay, now look here. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Big difference. This is the new one. This is the one out of my van last Friday. <laughs> I'm a filter guy, you know. Yeah. And I obviously get, I get these filters at a very good price. And yet, <laughs> they, as you just said, they're very overlooked. And I was aghast. It'd been probably a year since I changed my cabin air filter. And man, I look at that. All that is stuff that otherwise I'd be breathing, you know, as I drive my vehicle. Yeah. So even people, even your audience, technicians, we tend to overlook that cabin air filter. It's kind of tucked away, you know. We don't give it much thought. But it really does a job for us. And it's easy. In most cases, it's easy to replace. Mine's about a one-minute job. But yeah. we just get about doing it. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, and we know the cabin air filter, of course, is is not only making the air in the, in that much tighter uh, airspace, uh, you know, clean, yep. um, but it also helps protect the uh, the evaporator from uh, from build up, helps keep oh, uh, the chance of odor from developing, and uh, and leading to premature failure. You know, those very expensive yep. to replace air conditioning parts. Go back to the, let's go back to the engine air filter for a moment. There, I mean, you showed up the the cabin air filter, and a lot of times, I mean, the elements themselves are are very similar. What is? How does that? Got good. That one you showed was pretty obvious. That was pretty pretty yeah. nasty. But how can a technician take a look at either one and determine the need for replacement? Well, the um, engine air filter, it's pretty difficult to. You know, typically the pleats are deep, and there are a lot of them. And, and other than the obvious ones that are just black, you know, with dirt, yeah. you have to rely on the recommended service interval for that filter. And what I like to remind people is, uh, and this is just a, a rough rule of thumb, but a good one. And it's a good one to remind your customers. When your car has consumed 10 gallons of gasoline, 80,000 gallons of air have passed through that filter. Wow. And that's air, again, that contains dirt, bugs, and all sorts of stuff. That if we yeah. don't get it filtered out, it's going in the engine and cause it to wear. So 80,000 gallons of air, 10 gallons of gasoline. So pretty substantial volume going through there. Yeah, I actually heard once before it described uh, in a way that that for every tank full of gas you burn, you you, you took in the equivalent of a swimming pool full of air. That's Is that uh, eighty that's thousand. I, I guess that's a pretty good one too. A lot of air. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, that's the big thing. A lot of contaminants. And, and some of those contaminants, like you said, especially in the modern filters, you're not going to be able to see easily. So, so as Bill recommended. You know, follow the maintenance manu uh, the manufacturer's maintenance schedule for replacement for the air filter and inspection. Make sure you do that. And, you know, we're professionals. We should be doing that anyway. Um, I'm going to ask you too, Bill. You know, one of the steps that I got taught a long time ago by another experienced tech or older tech was to take the air filter element out of the car, the engine filter, and then just just lightly just let it go, let it fall to the floor. Yeah. And uh, and if you saw anything on the floor. They came out of the filter. You needed to replace the filter. What do you think of that? Yeah, that's okay, I guess. But to me, the way I look at it, once I've done that, I might as well put a filter in. I got the labor of taking it out. Yeah. You know? <laughs> if I've got it out, I might as well put another filter in. And uh, I'm really, uh, like I say, I'm better at my air filter in the engine than I am my cabin air. But it's really important to change that filter. As it plugs up, of course, less air gets into the engine. The car starts to run a little bit richer. So you know it isn't good for the vehicle. Absolutely, absolutely. And anything else that you want to share with us on? Uh... Yeah, yeah I've got a couple uh, little things to share with you. Unfortunately, sure. I don't have one to show you, but you'll notice that, uh, you know, for years and years, air filters, and many of them still do, they have a wire mesh that supports the filter element. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. But we're into what we call eco filters today. Someday you and I will have to chat about eco oil filters, but we're into eco filters. Eco means that there's no metal in that filter at all. It can be crushed and incinerated. Mm -hmm. are air filters, in many cases, the wire mesh has been placed, replaced by a lattice work of plastic. So if you see that, don't think, oh, man, they must be cutting corners here, you know, saving some money. We do that because it allows that filter to be an eco filter. And, of course, car manufacturers are big on, on that. So the plastic does the job and allows that filter to be crushed and incinerated. So you'll see more and more eco air filters as time goes on. Sure. Awesome. Uh, any other comments that uh, you want to make as far as uh, the specifics for Molly's filter line? Yeah. 
One last little tidbit. You asked me about airflow and micron size and stuff like that. And we are, do you know what the Chrysler Hellcat is? That's what everybody in Detroit oh, yeah. is about. 700 horsepower, you know, car. Yeah. And we're the OE supplier on the air filter for that Hellcat. Wow. Interesting. Of course, anyone that owns a Hellcat is an automotive enthusiast. No kidding. Yeah. So right on the end of that air filter is all those specifications you ask about. What will filter micron size? How much air will flow through it, etc. Yeah. So it was kind of interesting. You know, we knew up front anybody that has one of these cars is an enthusiast. Let's give them all that stuff that they're wondering about. So in that case, there we actually print it right on the filter. Yeah. Um, and of course, you make a wide variety of, of applications to fit. What kind of coverage does Molly have now on the air filter coverage? We have really good coverage. We're original equipment, and that's why most people don't know a lot about Molly filters. We're original equipment on 300 European cars on the average year, and, and quite a few Asian cars as well. And we've never had a huge presence in the aftermarket until the last year or so. Right. But we're a billion dollar a year filter manufacturer, so it puts us in the top three worldwide. So we wow. know the filter business from the OE side. Is there a, a WD or, or, or Jobber network set to where they can access those filters in the aftermarket now? Yes, there is a WD uh, system set up. Uh, we also are selling them through Amazon.com as well, to not only to retail but to wholesale accounts also. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, a follower who's out in the hinterland somewhere, you know, and can't access a WD, he can buy case lots through Amazon as well. And if any of you guys who are watching, they want to take more advantage of uh, not just the, the filter product or, or, but any of the uh, aftermarket products in Molly's line, where can they go to get information on that and learn more? I'm glad you ask because the answer is Ask Molly Clevite. That was our old name, AskMollyClevite.com. And that's online. That takes you right into the inquiry system that I see everyone every day. Awesome. I'll contact you back. I'll hook you up with our salespeople or our technical people, depending on what your question is. Away we go. Wow. Well, that's the one good one stop for everything. So, guys, you heard it. Ask MollyFleetLight.com for more information on Molly's filters. Whether you have a technical question, a product application question, or, or just want to know where you can get you know, the Molly product line you know, for your customers, that's where you need to go. Bill, thanks so much for taking the time again to hang out with us and answering a few questions on the importance of filtration and providing the information on how we can find out more about Molly. My pleasure. Let's do it again soon. All right, bud. Thank you so much. Bye.